Hello friends, welcome to the channel IT Simplified. In today's session on Azure, we are going to do a lab for Azure Data Factory in which we are going to do all the steps which are listed on your screen. So we are going to start with creating two storage accounts. One is Blob and the other one is Data Lake version 2. Then we're going to create Data Factory in which we're going to create two link services and two data sets. And then finally, we're going to create a pipeline. Now, I will highly recommend if you have not watched the first part in which I have discussed in detail what are the different components which makes this Azure Data Factory service. So please go and watch that. I'm going to leave that link in the description. So with that, let's get started. And uh, we're going to start with step number one, which is creating two storage account, one which is Blob and Data Lake. So I'm going to flip over to my Azure portal and you can see I'm logged in with my admin credentials. And let's go and search for storage account. Now all this deployment will be under one resource group, which is going to be ADFRG. And uh, for this entire lab, I'm going to use Canada Central as my region. So for the storage account name, I'm going to name it source and make sure that uh, it is a unique name. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the performance tier as standard. And for redundancy purposes, I'm going to use the locally redundant. And rest everything, you can leave that to the default and review. In this storage account, I'm going to create a container and I'm going to name it source container. And in this container, I'm going to upload a file and the file will be uploaded to a folder with the name school grade now this file is under is in a csv format i'm going to pick this and let's go and upload perfect so that is done now very similar to the first option i'm going to create another storage account but this time it's going to be data lake storage and again it's going to be under the same resource group which is adfrg and i'm going to name this Sync data lake 11 and again my entire lab is under Canada Central. I'm going to also pick locally redundant here. Now the only thing that you have to change is under the advanced button you see you have data lake storage generation 2. You just need to check the box for enable hierarchical namespace and rest everything is default and let's create. Okay, so in this data lake storage, I'm also going to create a container.
Okay, so with this we have created step number one and now let's go and uh, search for data factory. Give a name you want for this and uh, I'm going to use Canada Central again for my location. If you want, you can always configure the Git by putting the uh, appropriate account name. But in my case, I'm not going to do any Git configuration. I'm going to leave everything else to the default and uh, create my Azure Data Factory. And while this is getting created, in the back end, it is going to create an integration runtime, which is basically the compute which is being used for copying and transforming of data. So Azure Data Factory was also created successfully. And you can see on the left side of the blade, I have uh, overview activity log. I can give access based on the job description under IAM. I can tag it. I can also set up the networking based on where I'm copying the data, whether it's within the Azure service or from on-prem. I can also log the resources to prevent undue deletion. And also for monitoring, I can also configure alerts, metrics by providing my credentials or email to which all these alerts will be sent, right? But the one that I'm concerned about is I'm going to open the Launch Studio button. It will open a new tab for me. And while actually this is getting open, with this, we have created two steps, right? We created two storage account and the data factory. And now we are going to create two link services and two data sets for a blob storage and data lake storage respectively. So let's go back to our studio. Let me just close this. And I'm just going to expand this. And you can see that on the left side, you have home, author, monitor, manage, and learning center. Now to create the link service, we are going to go under manager and let's go and create a new. Now in this case, we are going to create one for blob story. So I'm going to pick that and uh, feel free to give the name you want. And this is the integration runtime, which is created by default. Authentication type for my blob storage going to be the account, which is okay. And I'm going to pick my subscription under which my storage account is. And the name of my storage account is source blob 11. And let's go and create. All right, so the first link service was created and let me also create the other one, which is for data lake. And it is data lake storage generation two Feel free again to give any name you want. You can give a description. And again, very similar to the first option, I'm going to give my Azure subscription and the name of my storage account was Sync Data Lake 11. And let's create. So with this, we have created both these link services and now we are going to create two data sets for that. We're going to go to author and I'm going to expand these three dots beside data sets and let's create and search again for the blob. Again, my blob does the file which I have is under the CSV format. So I'm going to select that and uh, you can give any name you want for your data sets, but I'm going to leave that to the default and let's associate this with the link service we just created, right? And uh, for the file path, let me pick. And I'm not going to import any schema, so I'm going to say none and click on OK. And I'm going to create another data set, which is for my data lake storage. Again, it's in CSV format. And again, I'm going to name it as delimited text two. And the link service I want to associate with this data set is data lake link service.
this is a container that we created and uh, I'm also going to name the directory here let's say school and the file name that I want to have under which it will be synced is say SG or school grade right I'm not, again not going to import any schema here so I'm going to say none and let's click on OK so that's good so we have uh, going back to our lab steps we have also now created two link services as well as two data sets and now finally we're going to create our pipeline right now for that let's go to the pipeline button and i'm going to create new pipeline here and these are all the different activities that you can perform now in our case we're talking about copy activity so I'm going to search for it and uh, move it here and let me just expand this so that I have more space and you can give the name for your copying activity. So we are saying that we want to copy data from blob to data lake. And in our case, the source going to be the source data set is the delimited text one, which is a blob storage and the sync is going to be the delimited text to which is our data lake storage right and with everything selected let's validate just to see that there is no error so your pipeline has been validated with no error so let's close it and let's now debug let's give few seconds for the output All right, so you can see that the status is successful. The integration runtime is auto resolve integration runtime and the run ID also we got here. And if I go and go in the details, you can see that my data was copied from my blob storage into the data lake storage generation two. It also specified the region. It gives me the read time also, then the data written. So this was my source and this is my sync and the copy duration so just remember one thing that uh, which is critical in azure data factory you're charged for how long those activities are running which by the way you can also schedule now this was only for the lab purposes but you can also schedule what time you want to run this uh, uh, copying of data from source to sync right so right here you can see uh, you can also go and uh, cross check on the uh, azure portal so if I go to my storage account and go and expand my container under the data lake because that was our destination, you can see my folder and this is the data which has been copied from the blob storage. So with this, we have uh, successfully done a lab in which we created the storage account, the data factory, created link services, as well as data sets. And then we run that pipeline and our data has been moved from Azure Blob Storage into Azure Data Lake Storage version 2. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.